Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Deep Drop. Luke McCredden here. Adam Ring with me. Adam, fishingworld.com.au is where you and I go when we need to find out what's happening around the country with fishing and boating. Mate, you've been there this week. What have you found? I found something that jumped off the screen at me, Luke, because it was super interesting. Wowza. And it was around the recapture of a kingfish. Now, listen, listen to this. Here's, the, here's what happened. There was a kingfish caught by a recreational angler in Coffin Bay, South Australia. Right. 26 days later, it was recaptured in Jarvis Bay. Jeez. So to give you an idea, that's over 1,819 kilometers in 26 days. Yeah. Therefore means that's an average that that kingfish traveled roughly 70 kilometers per day. That's a that's a long way. It's a it's a long way. That that fish was moving with purpose. Yeah. Absolutely. So it got me thinking. I've got questions, Luke. That's what <laughs> I've we got do questions. Here. And I sure as shit hope you can answer them cuz I don't know. <laughs> Well, you know, the deep drop is all about asking questions and never really answering them. <laughs> That's right. So, I want to know, Yeah. how did one kingfish swim 1,819 kilometers mm. in 26 days and in all those kilometers didn't think, might stop here for a bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or did it? Or did it? Or did it? And it's did actually it, smashing did, out did more it, than 70 kilometers a day. Yeah, it's poor. It's having. It might be having every fifth day off. I mean, do the maths. It might like be. It, yeah. it might be hitting hundred. It might be hitting a hundred clicks a day. Rest day. We've undersold but, this article. Might have undersold it. Yeah, but, but well, yeah. <laughs> but isn't that weird? Isn't yeah. it weird how it travelled all of those? So that tells me what was it doing. It was. It had a purpose on its mind. Oh, too right. But here's what's weird about it, because it. When you think kingfish, you think, you know, when, especially when it comes to fishing for them, you think they're held up on a bommy, they're on a reef, they're schooled up, they're just doing circles, eating, gorging themselves, having all sorts of fun. You, I, I don't typically think of them as just a fast-moving, going from A to B type um, fish. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, you, you know, yeah. tuna are constantly just on the go. They're just like, you yep. know, their tails don't stop and they're just flat out. Kingies, I, I think, sometimes just chill a bit more. You know, they're just like, oh, I'll just hang here for a bit. This one, nope. Imagine how much it would suck if you ended up being a kingfish that happened to be in that school. Because that <laughs> fish didn't swim on its own. You'd be like, oh, I didn't sign up for this. You'd be pointing out every single bait ball on the way. Can we just stop on this one? Can I- we stop on this one? Oh, yeah, like the kids in the back seat. Yeah, yeah. Where are we so, going? Yeah, where are we How going? long is it going to take? Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, I just want to eat hungry. a slimy. Like, is that too yeah. much to ask? There's heaps of slimies there. Why are we swimming past them? I don't want to be a sceptic, Adam. But was it on its own? Maybe it was. Maybe it was just a rogue. A rogue kingy that was just angry at the world. Just went, I just want to change of scenery like don't get me wrong yes it gets warm in south australia from time to time we know those bays can really heat up the water but i just need a tropical change of scenery and it's gone was it the the forest gump of kingfish it just kept running just kept running and because and so caught at jarvis bay am i it did it was it released because oh, yeah, I, 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 I think it was caught by a pro boat. I was caught by a pro boat, yeah, okay, <laughs> think... so it wasn't. Well, I'm just wondering, was it... I mean, it might have only been halfway to where it needed to go. Maybe it, maybe it had a bet with its mates <laughs> on how far it could swim before it got caught. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of their mates just got caught 10 metres down the road. And he's like, come <laughs> on, just mate. laughing. Yeah, it's what are like, you doing? <laughs> and he's going, I'll get, I'm, I've got this. But what, look, who's to say it wasn't heading up to the Great Barrier Reef because he read a brochure about how tropical and amazing it was. It was going on holidays. Fucking why not? In all the honesty, thing- though, like, he, 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 oh, is there any data on? I mean, how far north do they go? They hit the. I know they hit the mid north coast of New South Wales or the north coast of New South Wales, parts of Queensland. I'm assuming southern. 
I don't how, know, uh, yeah. Because in all honesty, like that's a m- massive it's trip. A big swim. Do, are they doing that more often than we? Well, that's the... but the other thing it got me thinking. I'm about now is... asking you questions. See yeah, how I turn nah. that. See how I've yeah, turned that around. Yeah, it's good. That's uh, <laughs> the true sign of someone who's got no answers for me. Yes. I appreciate that. Yeah. But the other thing it got me thinking about is what other cool species are there that would be cool to tag and have mm. a look. Oh, as you know, that I spent some time with. The VFA and we did the Mako shark tagging, satellite tagging. I loved every bit of that. That was so much fun as far as obviously good fun to get up close and personal with the Mako. But then to see where she spent some time and, and a lot of the sharks that they tagged, where they sort of went and they, they did a, a lap of around Tassie and headed up towards Sydney and so forth. It, but, it, you know, I just think... You know, a lot of people like me would kind of just love to tag every fish and see where they go. But I do also think that there's no, and scientists out there will just probably tell me to shut up, but I don't, and this kingfish might be backing up what I'm about to say, is I don't think necessarily there's an absolute A to B with every species. Look, and the Makos that we that were tagged, that were tagged by the VFA were a sign of that. Some of them, a couple of them sort of went west and, and then the rest of them, when either through Bass Strait or around Tassie and up towards Sydney. But I'm just curious as to whether we think we know more about movements than we... You know what I mean? Like, to your point, I absolutely love to tag a heap of fish to see what they do. Have we done... We've had the, we've had the swordfish. Yes. Kingfish. Um, old Donnie Newman's tag and whiting. Um, you know, marlin. You know, the big ones. Yeah. And there's all one common denominator with all those species. Mm. Boring shit. Mm. Wrong species. <laughs> we need we need some yeah. proper science happening, Luke. We need stuff that matters. Yeah. So what are you what are you thinking? How interesting would it be to stick a tag in a toadfish <laughs> and see what it does? Are they as annoying and pointless as what we think? Do they spend their whole life on one weed bed where they've been born? They just swim around, being annoying. Eating pippies, biting Did off hooks, and getting skimmed off outboards. If I, <laughs> or <laughs> or do they actually if, move? If I find, if we do this, and I find they're doing some unbelievably epic journeys, I will not drop punt another one off a pier ever again. This is what I'm saying, Luke. Yeah. We've just we've been tagging the boring species. I want to know what's happening. Can you imagine the a species? Toady, a toady clocked up seventy c- clicks a day, and we're all just going, "Ah, oh, the shit fish, just bloody Ima- toadies." Imagine you found out that at some point of the year, the toadies just decided to swim to the deepest parts and just go, "Yeah, I'm just going to chill here for a sec." <laughs> Nothing eats me. I don't no, care. It's all right. Like let's let's tag a leather jacket. See what happens. Like, what are they? What do they do? Yeah. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. We don't know. Bastards. Yeah. Never one trying to eat my camera that time when we were fishing that together. That's still one of the coolest things I've ever seen yeah. on a fishing boat. Um, so, yeah, look, I, even... Are we tagging gummy sharks? Have we seen what they're doing or are they just heading out deep and... Look, I'm just wondering whether they're heading up the coast and moving around and doing trips down south and yeah. into the deep channel, you know, like off the shelf and stuff like that. Yeah, like how deep are they going? What yeah. are those offshore fish doing? Are those offshore fish the same as the ones that are in the port yep. in Western Port and in Port Phillip Bay? Have we tagged a dewy or a big dusky and seen them leave systems? You know what I'm saying? See, this is the this is the cool shit. This is the cool. I shit. I want to know. I want to know what a paddo mulloway does. Yes. Does it just mooch under the houses until it gets to a meter twenty? Yeah. Fifty, sixty, seventy pound. And that's what it does. Do you reckon? Or do you reckon? It do they go? Does it go and hang out on the outer artificial in Port Phillip Bay? Yeah, but that would be the boundary. Like I'm, I'm wondering. I've got this whole scenario in my head. It's, it's like, it, it, do you reckon the Werribee River Mulloway, the Yarra Mulloway, and the Paddo Mulloway are all like the same? No, they're all different families, and they don't talk. They don't get along, so they stick to their own <sighs> rivers. Yeah. So the outer artificial is a bit of a meeting point, but they don't. That's. If you're a Werribee Dewey, you're not coming over that far. Do you know what else would be awesome? Warmy's tailor. <laughs> Why is a tailor yes. not seen in any part of Port Phillip Bay except for the Warmies? It's so true. Where do they go? 
What do they do? Are they literally living and dying there or are they just making a beeline from the heads to the warmies and they're not not turning an eye until they get there? It's just they know where they need it. That's a great one. Mm. We're just we're tagging the wrong species, Luke. We're tagging the I'm wrong saying. species. And look, we don't want to tell you how to do your jobs, BFA or whoever these organisations are, but... You know, be better. Be better. What? <laughs> but you're just doing the wrong species. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, what about... What are those big jumping mullet trying to do? Whack a tag in one. Oh, good are they trying one. to escape? Are they just trying to look out of the water and go, what the, where am I? I need good to one. get somewhere else. They might be smashing out massive kilometres. Yeah, that's a real good one, actually. Mm. I mean, they're stupid fucking things, though, aren't they? And they stink. They stink. I wouldn't want to tag one. No. But still, in the name of science. In the name of science, I'll wear a hazmat suit and I'll do it. So, I want to know, what species should we be tagging? Yeah. Like, re- like the, the proper ones. The proper ones. Like, we've ones. seen some big ones and that's all cool, whatever. yeah. And it is. All the data's fun and exciting. but And this kingy, I'm calling it rogue. I love yeah, the something's idea wrong that, with that kingy. I love the idea it's just yeah. gone, peace out, gone. And unfortunately, I still think he had a fair way left on his trip. Poor bugger. Yeah, hey, I'm not convinced he knew where he was going. <laughs> he might, was he actually trying to get to New Zealand? He was just swimming. And he was, kept going up. Yeah, he was just swimming. Is there a chance that kingfish do cross the Tasman? Well, that one would have, given half a chance. No, but in all honesty, like, has anyone, has there ever been a tagged fish show up in international waters? Not that New Zealand is international, it's a state of Australia, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but genuinely, I might be, uh, someone out there might be thinking I'm a dick. I'm genuinely asking, like, has that ever happened? And would they ever travel that far? I mean, with you know, you're asking the wrong dude. No, I'm asking you. Not even I can make. Not even I can make up an answer for that one. Well, I'll ask the punters. Is there anyone out there? (laughs) It's the same species. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not. Mm. It's not that. I know it's still a long, long way. But this this thing did 70 k's a day. Yeah. All I'm saying it was on a mission. Potentially, I'm still saying it did more because it stopped at a feed. Maybe had a weekend off. Had a, had a kit. Yeah. Like just, I don't know, hit a bomb and just thought I'll just chill here for a couple of days. Yeah. Did its thing, you know. I mean, 70 clicks a day. Jesus. I just, I want to break, I feel like I need to break that down even more. Like, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. At what speed, you know, like, wow. Anyway. Cool one. But again, it's just one of those things that I think you could open it very large can of worms on species uh, that you could choose to tag. I, I think there's something in the dewy, dusky flathead thing. I'd love yeah. to see. Yeah. Uh, and I know, obviously, there is a bit of tagging going on, but I'm, I'm wondering whether there's been one caught in a system and then potentially caught in a separate system that, whether it be close or far, interests me. It, it, yeah. it, it interests me as to whether they're moving out out of the out of a particular estuary system Swimming offshore and, and finding the next one or, or whatever it is due to... God, it'd be food, I'm assuming. You know what I mean? Those estuary mull away, they're, a, they're an interesting one because we've all seen the, you know, the old Attenborough footage and if you go to the, the aquarium, you can see the Jewies school up and you know they are an offshore moving species. Mm. But are those ones that settle into the estuaries, are they, just, are they estuarine fish for... The entirety of their lives, or are they well, moving? Yeah, are they are they moving offshore between systems? Are they cruising out at certain parts of the year? Are they like again? I, I use any. Is it a those, sl- pa- those pato jewies? You can't tell me they're not going out and sitting on the inner artificial for. Or are they moving out of the the bay completely at some point? Yeah, we, we've spoken about you know snapper being different stock. Yeah, in, com- like, entirely. So it's again, sort of- I, I want to know what our toadies are doing. There's toadfish around the country and, and you, know, you know, keeping in mind that, that a lot of... We've got to think nationally here, Adam, because we might be just touching on something that 
that needs to be done in the name yeah. of science. What in the name of science? Name like of banjos. Science. Banjos. <laughs> I want to know, is there a time of year... <laughs> we can get them on top water. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say avoid them altogether. <laughs> or are they just always there and annoying? Even just the the uh, the less popular of the tuna species, like Wackatag and an albacore, just just mm. see just to see what's happening, or are they just doing the same thing that most of the other tuna species are doing? Or elephant fish? Elephant fish, Jesus Christ! We we know they come from the great depths, but where? Like, what sort of run do they have to make to get to Western Port? Part of me thinks you wouldn't be that surprised if you found out an elephant fish was putting in massive caves. Yeah. You know, like I'm talking but in totality, if, not necessarily in a day, but like they've just gone from... So then, but if we only ever see them caught in Port Phillip Bay or Western Port, mm. what if I didn't want to wait for them to come in? Where could I go and catch one? Are you targeting them? Well, I've never heard, I've never heard of, say, an elephant fish caught deep dropping off... Portland or deep dropping in Tassie no one's as far as I'm aware where do they go true it, it seems to me they're not they would be the next step would be offshore somewhere you know what I mean yeah. and how come there's not as many around as what they used to be I think it's easy to say we overfished them but for a fish that's only here for a few weeks of the year you can't tell me we've obliterated the whole species yeah I don't know it's a, Where it's do a they mad go? One. Now, Ads, I just want to refer back to, to Fishing World for a moment because shortly after the amazing recaptured kingfish um, article you referenced, I actually had seen it, but I also saw another one because there is another one, uh, which is a recapture in South Australia. But this is, see, this is, this is where it's interesting because these fish are big. What was the size of that first one you were talking about? Did we say? No. We took, it was. It was. Oh no! It was. De- it was decent. Yeah. So this one that I'm going to refer to now uh, from this article, it was originally tagged and released. Uh, sorry, in... sorry to cut you off. It was really decent. It was 126 centimeters long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so a proper it's a, one. A goodie. Yeah. So the original kingfish I'm talking about here was originally tagged and released in Sydney, um, and it's been recaptured for the second time. So it was. Tagged in 2021 and estimated to be over 30 kilos. So that's a proper yellowtail kingfish. Like Where 30 that kilos. Sydney? Yeah. Yeah. 684 days later, it was recaptured and re-released at Port Augusta. Ooh, so that's okay. so that's 21. That's that's over 2,100 kilometers from yeah, its original. It also, it also took it 250 odd days. I mean, it took its time. <laughs> 684 days. Like, what to do? Swim backwards. <laughs> Are you knocking it? We've got kingies out here putting in, you know, 1,800 Ks in 26 days. What's this one doing? <laughs> Growing. No, well, not really, actually, because it was, it was again estimated at 30 kilos, so it hadn't even grown. Uh, um, <laughs> it it swam too far and burnt off too much weight. And then, and then 24 days later, caught again at Port Augusta. And re-release. So it didn't, it's still going. Um, but it stopped and it's spent... So this is... All right. This is going to go back to the original article. So 684 days after being originally caught in Sydney was caught in Port Augusta. You go, okay, that's a few... A couple of years, whatever. But then 24 days later, caught in the same spot in Port Augusta. So has it gone, this will do me? Yeah. Has it gone, oh, I'm, this is where I need this to is, be? This is it. Or is it on an extended holiday? And it's like, for fuck's sake, I've just been caught twice on my holiday. Yeah, that's a, that's a shit holiday. Yeah, that's a rough holiday. But, anyway, but that, so it's happening. They're moving big distances ads. And I, I think uh, I think it opens up the imagination to what other species are doing. Oh, fascinating. I did notice the first one you were talking about went through Bass Strait. Didn't do the, the full lap of, uh, of Tassie. Just, just cut it off there. Just went, nah. I'm good. I'll just go straight yeah, through. Nah. Yeah, it nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Had a look. Just went, nah. Didn't want to travel overseas. Didn't <laughs> Didn't have a passport. No. Uh, so I don't know. I, I mean, I, I want to know because, I mean, they're caught around 
bottom of Western Australia and stuff too, aren't they, Kingies? Yeah. So how far up? Where would they That's, go? Well, see, there's another... Another question. The West Australian stock. Where do they go? I don't know. Because any further east than that's Africa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think they're looking this way and going, oh, too cold? Probably. It's like going. It's like us going to the snow, like on holidays in the snow. Yeah. It's like it's fun and it's the novelty's there, but a couple of you know the bit yeah. day and a half later, you're like, right. you just go to your mates. Oh, you go and do it and tell me what it's like. Yeah, I'm good. And it costs a fortune. So they'd be going, I'm swimming down to Melbourne. It's going to cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah. And it's cold. Doesn't sound appealing. <laughs> anyway, I reckon there's, uh, there's plenty there to look into ads. We've got, to, we've got to find out what the next fish we're going to tag is and make it cool, people. Come on. So what do you want to see tagged? What journey, species journey, do you want to see? And get creative. I don't want these boring oh. species like kingfish, makos, and swordfish. Cool. The Be real done. stuff. The Yawn. real stuff. <laughs> the so real stuff we wanted. I was just on. talking about how cool the Mako thing was. <laughs> it really was, by the way. It really was. But yeah, no, nah, let's get let's get creative with this. Let's get serious with it. Yeah. Maybe and you want and tell us what you want to know. It's easy to say just oh yeah, what species do you want to stick a tag in? And it might what be, do you want to know? But yeah, it might be something um that will help you fishing. Like you want to stick a tag in like a yakka. Yeah. Because that's you want right. to see if it gets caught somewhere and if they're moving or they're just hanging around, you need a bait collection, you don't have to think too much about it. Correct. All right, good. Well, you know where to find us. Uh, the Deep Drop on Instagram is the place. Let us know. And don't forget to check out all the uh, the awesome content on fishingworld.com.au. We'll be back very soon, Adam. Goodbye, my friend. Peace. Peace.